understanding how to work with date data is key in Bubble. And Bubble is actually quite powerful when working with date data. Let's have a look at how we can manipulate these dates on the front end to show dates basically ahead of time, behind time, and everything in between. So first off, it's good to know that when dates are captured in the Bubble database, they're captured in a UTC time. This is the developer standard accepted globally by all developers, okay? So zero UTC, London time, same as GMT. But based on your browser, your browser sets the time zone. So I'm currently London time, um, nice and easy for me, but I, I wouldn't know the difference. So five o'clock for me, or actually, what are we now? We're almost three o'clock for me. If you live in New York, that, that will be displayed in your own time zone. But in the database, those times will be exactly the same. Okay, so today is May the 5th, 2021 at 2.58. Every time I refresh the screen, we're going to see something slightly different, of course, as time goes on. Let's have a look at what we can do, okay? So from a date, so from the current date and time, we can present it in many ways, and we can also manipulate it in many ways. So basically, I'm using current date and time as a starter point for all of these. So day of the week is Wednesday. This month is May. A month from today is June 5th, 2021. Okay. The first of next month is June 1st. The starting date of week two next month is June 8th. This I love. Arbitrary dates is something new that Bubble has added, and it's a semantic way to be able to type next Monday and get a date. So that's amazing. And then, uh, yep, so two weeks' time would be May 19th. A day is left in the month of May for me, which is 26. Let's have a look at how I've done this. So quite simply, we've just got current date and time, okay? How do we get day of the week? Well, we take the current date and time, and we can set up custom formatting. So we're probably used to seeing these options here. So something like that. But how would I get day of the week? Because the day of the week is not here. And this is where we head down to the custom area. And custom area has various options. So we could say, now watch this area over here where it says formatted as Wednesday. If I type D for day, that's going to give me just the fifth, right? The date. Two Ds, zero five. Three Ds gives me an abbreviated day of the week, Wednesday, and full Wednesday. So that's quite neat. So I could add in M, two M's, three M's for May. And that would be abbreviated, it is three, it is three letters. If it was September, it will just be SEP. So I'd have to add a fourth for it to be September. And then we can add year, year, two Y's gives me 21, three gives me 2021. So this is how we can manipulate date data. I'm just going to say three Ds for day of the week. This month, I've set a custom, which is just three Ms. That gives me the full written month. How about a month from today? So a month from today, what we're looking for is, so a month from today relative to the, the current date and time. So the current date and time, if I refresh, should be a few minutes past three. Yep, 304 months from now is June the 5th at 304. So a starting point again would be current date and time. And then go down to these plus. So you can take the current date and time down to the second and add as many as you want. Okay, so I've just added, I've just said add a month plus one. I could say subtract a month, which will take us back to April. So if I say minus one, let's go have a look at the result over here. So we were June, it's currently May, but minus a month is April 5th. So plus month minus one, I'm going to take it back to one. What about the first of next month? How do we do that? Because if we add a month, the result is June 5th, uh, 2021, but it's June 5th. Now, 
if you're like me, I'm always trying to get the first of next month or I'm trying to get Monday or the start of something, right? So there's a particular way to do this. So the first of next month. So let's look at this expression. We first start with current date and time, and then we add a month. So plus month one, okay? So if we stop there, that gives us June the 5th at the current time. Current time being about three minutes past seven at the moment. But then we can change dates to, okay? We have this option, change month to, change date, change hour to, change dates to, we can change years to. So that's amazing. So I'm going to change dates to one. So that basically means the first date of that particular month. After that, I can then change hours to zero, however I like, but there's another option here. So currently we have current date and time plus a month gives us June 5th. Change date to the first gives us June 1st. That's going to give us June 1st at the current time though. So about 10 minutes past three at the moment. I can actually round this down to a date. But let's see what other options we have here. I can round down to the day, to the hour. Okay. So if it was 10 minutes past three, it would round down just to three. When you round down to date, now I'm going to format that in a format I'd like, which is actually no time. It's just May the 5th in terms of the format. But this will bring us back to June the 1st. Okay, let's look at that one more time. So I've added a month. I've then changed, so we're now in June. I've then changed the date to one and rounded down and then formatted in the format that I'd like. Let's have a look at um, week two next month. So basically Monday, the second Monday of June. How do we get that? So for this, I'm going to say a similar thing, starting position. So current date and time plus one month, change day to one, round down to dates. And then I'm going to add. So now we can add and subtract things, right? Add days, add hours, subtract hours, subtract days. So I'm going to add seven days from the 1st of June because this is how we get to the 1st of June. Okay, so after this, round it down to dates, I'm going to add seven days and then create the format that I like, whether it's custom or something that Bubble provides us. So then that gives us June the 8th. Now to my favorites. This is the new feature. It's amazing. Trying to get a Monday at a variable position of the week is actually quite difficult. Trying to get any four dates uh, day of the week. That's why Bubble created arbitrary dates because it actually allows us to type something in how we would reference it normally. So what about next Monday? Okay, if I close this and then open it again, we can see that it's found next Monday relative to today. Today's the 5th of May, next Monday is the 10th of May, and it's found it. Isn't that, a, isn't that amazing? Next Tuesday. And then we've got the 11th of May. All right, let's go back to next Monday. This is probably my favorite feature that Bubble has created with dates next Monday. And then um, I'm going to change hours to eight. So that's going to give me next Monday, 8 a.m. What a great time to send out perhaps your next marketing email. May the 10th at 8 a.m. Okay. So what did I do here? So after I had the date and time, I then chose to change hours to. So change hours to, and then I just typed in eight. What did I do for this one? So arbitrary date and time, we have two weeks time. So why don't I just copy this? Two weeks time, go to arbitrary date. So we're looking for Wednesday, May the 19th. If I just type in two weeks time, close this, open it back up, Wednesday, May the 19th. Isn't that amazing? So it gives us all of this information to work with, and then we can format it as we please. Okay, final one, 
how many days are left in this month? And I use this often, okay, around things like pricing, uh, amount of trial left over, that kind of thing. So days in the month, days left in the month. So for this, I'm going to use arbitrary date and time. Okay, and I just wrote next month. So next, next month from the current date and time would be June the 5th, because it's currently May the 5th. So next month, and then I've rounded down and I've chosen the month. But let's just see what that gives us so far. Okay, so next month rounded down to the month is June the 1st, 12 a.m., right? Down, down to the second, basically. Perfect. And now what we need to do, so we've got a date, right? This evaluates to a date. Perfect. Now we need to subtract current date and time, which is May the 5th. And then Bubble is saying, well, how would you like to present this? Do you want to format it as days, hours, minutes, seconds? I'm going to say format as days. So a future date minus current date and time, and we've got 26.4. I prefer something more rounded down. So I'm going to say uh, floor. Floor is just going to remove the decimal so we have a whole number. 26 days left in this month. Today is the 5th, plus 26 brings us to the 1st of June. I hope you learned something there. <laughs> it's super fun to work with manipulating dates. So go ahead, try and take this a bit further. You'd be amazed what you can accomplish with what Bubble has given us. There is also Unix time, okay? So if you are working with APIs that require time in Unix, you can extract Unix, Unix from any date uh, in the database or from a current date and time. Enjoy.